We are people advocating cannabis education here at paceradio.net. The views expressed by the individuals during this broadcast are their own opinions, and they may not be the same as those of their group or other organizations they may be involved with. Hello everyone and welcome to the Pace Radio Show. We are being broadcasted live here at paceradio.net. Tonight, Kim and I have a guest who is educating people about cannabis and has teamed up with one of our sponsors. And in a quote, to make a change for indigenous communities in need of support to combat opiate crisis, unquote. But before we find out more, Kim and I are going to have our usual quick news chat. Good evening, Kim. How are you doing? I'm not not doing too bad at all tonight, Al. How's it going out there in Marmara? Well, it's, uh, it's, I'll tell you, it hasn't been October. It's been feeling more like June, like it's been really nice. Yeah. Really nice. Sunshine. Yeah, here, here too. Here. Yeah, eh? No tornadoes here too. this week? Northern Ontario. We're in, no, no tornadoes, no nothing. We're in like a heat wave. It was like 25 degrees. Yeah. Yesterday it was 22. Today, um, I don't know what's going on, but I'll take it. That's right, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Because because usually in October where you live, it's snowing, isn't it? Yeah, there's a large likelihood that we have snow by now. Most uh, most years by Thanksgiving, we've had at least one uh, minor snowfall with more on the way. So this is uh, this year is an anomaly and. Hell, I'm I'm pumped. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> Still working on the sand tan. All right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. Now we've got uh, a news article here today um, that oh. literally just blew both our minds. Um, we just yeah. couldn't. It was like, what? Really? Like, is this really happening? This is. This is. We're, 2021 right now right that's that's yeah. the correct year we didn't like travel back in time or something no no we didn't we didn't now according to vice news the headline yeah. on this on this yeah. headline is just disturbing man to be hanged for trafficking one kilogram of cannabis in singapore man to be hanged, hanged. The, hanged. the death penalty for cannabis in 2021 the accused claimed that he was threatened and coerced by narcotics officers and into admitting to drug trafficking and now he's going to die for it yeah because singapore's highest court uh, last week dismissed the man's appeal against his conviction and death sentence for allegedly allegedly bringing cannabis weighing uh, at least 2.2 pounds from malaysia Two pounds of cannabis, they're going to hang uh, Pounds of pet cannabis, and you are dead, Mr. Omar Jacob Bamaji, or Madaj. Sorry if I've mispronounced your name. I, I mean, the 41-year-old was arrested back in 2018 during a routine stop at a border checkpoint, and officers uh, said there were three bundles of, drug, of the drug found in his car. He was convicted in February and sentenced to hanging. His father was accompanying him in the car, but he was not charged uh, and uh, with any crime because he says he didn't know the packages were there. Yeah. Well, yeah. Hanged. Now, they also say here that Singapore Hanged. has yeah zero tolerance towards can, uh, cannabis or any illicit drugs and hangs hundreds of people, including dozens of foreign nationals, for drug offenses over the decades. Like, wow. Ugh. Like what the fuck? Yeah, I, I've got you know, I've got visions of 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 you know, pirates of the Caribbean going on in my head. Um, yeah. You know, human rights groups have long criticized the death penalty for its cruelty and the risk of wrongful execution, uh, as opposed to outweighing the the supposed public safety benefits. Uh, public opinion in Singapore remains largely indifferent to the practice, uh, with many in favor of it, believing that it deters 
drug traffickers and keeps crime low. <sighs> wow. Oh, oh, oh. I, this is just it's, they, this is painful. It this is. is painful to read. It is. Now, Amnesty International has condemned the caller's decision about hanging this guy. Yeah. This, this is, is just. This is unbelievable. It is. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. They uh, say you know, Singapore's sing- heavy reliance. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, exactly the same spot. On, on drag- dragatarian laws and policies have not only failed to tackle the use and availabilities of drugs, they've also given zero effective protection from drug related harm and instead facilitated a wrath of human rights violations. Yeah, draconian is not even a strong enough word here. I mean, this is just, they're heretics. I, I mean, it's just unbelievable. Yeah, it is. I, I can't even, I yeah. can't even think. I can't even think of words. Words come do not come to my brain yeah. for this because says, I cannot comprehend how this is happening. Omar also claimed that he he claims he didn't know that uh, the nature of the parcels and said that his acquaintances back in Malaysia had planted the drugs in his bag without his knowledge. Yeah. Yeah, and then he was pressured. I mean, if they, if Singapore Police Department and the views there. Are as they say, you know, where you know people applaud this kind of thing, and they don't they don't bat an eye. Oh, somebody's hanging. Oh, it's not a big deal. Then it's not far fetched to believe that this man was pressured into admitting mm. that he did something that he didn't do. Yeah. Um, you know, if this is the kind of system that they have there, then yes. absolutely wrongful conviction is. I mean, there's no turning back from that no. if that person is dead. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. They've well, always gone right to the highest court. He's done. He can't go any higher as far as appealing. So they say a date for his scheduled hanging has not admit, was not immediately announced. I don't imagine they will. This is the hanging people for cannabis. You know. Like, you know that are coerced into admitting to doing something that they didn't do because of a corrupt police department. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You know, and tonight we're going to talk about how cannabis is is treating and helping people. And here we're talking about it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're using it. It's a medicine. It's getting people, people well. This is. Yeah, and here this guy is dying for having packages that he says he didn't even know was there. And they were planted. And now he's going to die. Yeah. Yeah. Brutal. Just, just, it's insane. Mind blowing. Just mind it blowing. It is. I'm sure our guests may have a comment about this uh, this type of news story yeah. at some point tonight. But so let's bring our guest in. Uh, we've got so much to talk about on the good side of cannabis and the benefits it's doing. Yes. And uh, we will we'll be sharing that tonight. That's for sure. So, all right. So our guest, yeah. uh, who, yep, who I said is teamed up with one of our sponsors to make. A change for indigenous communities in need of support to combat the opiate crisis, we'd like to welcome Scott Granville to the Pace Radio Show. Welcome, Scott, to the show. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks a lot, Al. I really appreciate uh, you and Kim having me tonight. That's awesome. Yeah, we appreciate you taking the time and coming on here and uh, talking about uh, what you're involved in, uh, what this the project here with Pass the Peace Pipe, as well as uh, St. Fatty's Day and so much more. Well, thanks. Thanks for the opportunity. Um, yeah, I, I started St. Fatty's Day um, in 2018 um, on October 17th when we, uh, Canada, legalized cannabis. And it, it just popped in my head. I think I was probably smoking a joint at the time. Um, <laughs> came up with a brilliant idea that, hey, that's St. Fatty's Day. Like, March 17th is St. Patty's Day. Let's do it. So we immediately yeah, uh, bought the great URL. Idea. Um, and didn't know what to do with it. We just knew that it was a great idea um, as cannabis became legalized and, and whatnot. And, and I've been a user. Before we um, go any, I'm going to industry. interrupt you. I want to interrupt you, sure. Scott. Um, before we get, get all into all of the, the logistics of all of this, let's get some sure. background first before we dive in sure. to, to St. Patty's Day. Um, let's, let's learn a little bit more about you, what led you on this path. Um, how did you become involved in, in uh, 
cannabis. Obviously, you're a consumer. Yes. Um, well, it, it's it's always been a, a medicinal for me. Um, in, when I was 26 years old, back in 19, oh, geez, I'm pretty old, uh, back in the mid-80s, I was going to school for journalism, and I had a back issue, and, and no one knew it was an issue. And um, I ended up spending time, in, uh, a lot of time in, in hospital. Um, they discovered a tumor on the back of my um, spine. And... Oh. Uh, I survived uh, by by using cannabis. <laughs> it, it saved my life, and um, I've been an advocate ever since. Um, I've been in TV. I, I studied journalism, so I, I worked in in TV for 25 years and uh, developed four uh, series myself that were on Sportsman and Fox Sports World and whatnot. Uh, I use cannabis every single day since the day I was 26 years old uh, to help me get through the day. Um, it's been a lifesaver. Um, and in a head on car crash in 2005, um, did not help. <laughs> so, um, been even a stronger advocate since, um, trying to develop ways of getting into the cannabis world. Um, and St. Fatty's day was the way of, of doing it, um, in a good and positive way. Um, Absolutely. and yeah, it's, it's been a, it's been a, a, like for many people that you've been talking to over the years on your on your program, such a, a, a an easier way to um, help pain than opioids. And, absolutely. Um, yeah, it's, it's, absolutely. it's been it's been great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Um, pain, pain, and you know, uh, personal issues. Largely, what's what's moved the cannabis movement forward is using this as a medicine and brought us legalization on ten seventeen uh, of of yeah. a few years ago. And you know, you putting forth this movement is is really great. Now you're located down in southern Ontario. Near, are you in Tyendinaga? No, I'm I'm in Belleville actually, so it's a little um, we're just a, a wee west of Tyndanega. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm, I'm, so you're very well I, I'm aware of the opiate crisis there, right? Oh ab- no, absolutely. And and I've been um, you know I, I I moved back to Belleville after my car accident. Um, I was mm. basically born and in, 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 in raised in Belleville, and uh, so I, I came back to actually help my parents who were who were, who were really sick, and they never had a chance to try cannabis. Um, it was close. I almost got them convinced. Um, but I, 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 I've seen what T- Tim Barnhart's done at Legacy 420. I've seen how cannabis has developed um, in the wild, crazy way that it has in Times and Nega. Um, I think it's been fantastic for a lot of people. Um, and I've always wanted to get involved with Tim and his company because um, of the way they really push the medicine part of it. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of why I'm in Belleville. I'm, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur and um, TV producer, I guess you'd call. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, I do a, do a bunch of different things. And, and we're, we're just trying to, you know, the big thing for us is, is sure, recreational is fine. Uh, I have no problem with it at all. And I enjoy it. But it, for, it's for the medicine. It's, it, yeah. it really, we're trying to push, push that for the, the seniors. I mean, the senior citizens oh. in Belleville need to know more about it. Um, yeah. and, the, and the more they're educated, the more they can listen to your radio sh- show so they get, get education. Um, it's, it's important. So um, that's what we're trying to do. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, the Absolutely. seniors. Absolutely. And there's, the seniors, there's, a, there's a few areas doing that. Yeah. Uh, the seniors is a, is a large uh, sector of the growing cannabis community when it comes to the medicinal values of it. And, uh, you know, it's, sure. making, yeah. Yeah, it's making a big change in people. You know, there's people not, you know, when it comes to opiates and painkillers, people are looking for an alternative. I know, like my mother, um, she was didn't like the the opiate end of things, and um, but when it comes to the cannabis end of things too, she was she you know always grew up against cannabis. She saw the benefit right, yeah. that it made right. in me, and she agreed with the medicinal end of things. But you know she had problems with it on the recreational end, but. Uh, but you know, mother's mother's passed on now, and um, she was uh, appreciative of the people that I was able to help, and others that uh, who chose to to go that path. No, yeah, it, it's, absolutely. It's, it's funny, you know, the, the senior bit. The senior bit it brings to mind, you know, people like 
men uh, with Gary and uh, Pallister yeah. and Rob Mayhe. Uh, you know, I mean, the majority of the people that come in uh, for help from them are seniors. They host, you know, uh, classes teaching people to make, you know, the coconut oil infusions and stuff. And I've watched their videos and been there and it's like 95% are oh. seniors. Yeah. Yeah. When I was, yeah, docu- yeah documentaries in Camelford. Uh, I had a police officer that described the place as a science class with a bunch of gray heads. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. So it, it's good. It's good yeah. that they're reaching out. And, you know, uh, now with the opiate end of things and people learning more about cannabis, they, they have a, a choice, they have an option there now, at least yeah. more than what they had years ago. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and I've so. seen. I've been through the wars. I've been through. Yeah, like I've had ten, fifteen operations in the last ten years. Um, I've seen the difference in how hospitals and doctors treat um, and look at you um, when they ask you what kind of med- medicines are are you on, what, what medications are you on, and when I say cannabis, they smile now, and it's true. Like they they yes. actually smile now. It used to be yeah. they looked at you like you were a drug addict. When I when I first asked my for um, a medical license um, from a doctor, can I please can you advocate for it? She looked at me like I was a drug addict. Um, yeah, and it's changed. And and I will say that um, in the Belleville Kingston area, every operation hip, I've had both my hips replaced. Um, I just had an operation on September first. It was probably about my. 10th or 12th, I don't know, I've, I've lost track of how many, oh, but I've always noticed my. how the doctors are, are, are responding to it. And I'll just say this, um, there's a gentleman, uh, Dr. Bates, William Bates in Belleville. Now, he was the coroner of Belleville for 50 years. He was my, he, he saved my life. When I told you I, I, I had cancer in, uh, when I was in 26 years old, he saved my life. He's the one that, that, that caught it. Um, he was against cannabis. He was on radio shows saying, oh, I wouldn't, he's in his late 70s, he just retired in June, and he oh he wouldn't give cannabis to anybody because he saw that didn't see the, any benefit. He saw all the negatives, and so I sat down with him, and within a half hour, he changed his mind completely. He, he said, "Okay, let me look into it." Into it, and he completely changed. At the end of his career, he was known now in Belleville as the guy that um, is a pro cannabis doctor, and he told me not amazing because. Yeah, that he, and, and I don't know near what you guys know uh, about cannabis, but I know enough, mm. and I know that where the research is being done, and he was just absolutely blown away that I knew so much, and he said that, and I said, well, I, I, I only know what I know, and he looked it up, and, and credit to him. He was yes. in his 70s when, when, when he was arguing with me, and then he realized, oh, wait a minute, I'm just listening to what the med- medical um, establishment has been saying for 75 years. Yeah. yeah. And yeah what, he, the, was, what does a doctor always say to you when they give you a new prescription? Let me know how it works, right? So they take right. fee- they, yeah. they take feedback from, from people on prescriptions, so why not take feedback from patients on the cannabis end as well? Exactly. Exactly. And and the, that story is very familiar. No, you know, mm-hmm. where doctors are sort of dug in on um, yes. um, on their perceptions because of what they've been taught and what they've known sure. uh, through media, propaganda and everything else. And sometimes that's what it takes. It takes somebody with a little bit of knowledge to sit down and have an actual philosophical conversation on, you know, what this is for what this really is. And any doctor that, in my opinion, is um, there for to help his patients will take that stand yes. and say, all right, I am going to look into this further. If they don't do that, then you need to find another doctor because that's their mm-hmm. job is to look in, yeah. into new information. Uh, research being viewed in a different light without propaganda is shedding a new light on the medicinal benefits of this plant. For sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, so, so I mean, he did the right thing by saying, like, let me look into that. My hat's off to him. You know, thank goodness uh, for people that have values uh, yeah, where they can say, sure. 
yeah, okay, I want to look at this. Yeah, and, and you know, for, congratulations to yourself for going in there and speaking up and saying something. Because what that does is, yes. is, is, is gets him to educate himself. And then, you know, he, he, saw the, he saw the benefits in you, he saw the information he saw, and yet now he can go and help other patients as well. Well, you know, you know what really triggered it, Al, was was um, before I, I went in to see him was a radio, a Belleville radio show, and it was just before cannabis was becoming legalized, and there was a debate between these, the DJ and some other guy, and they were saying the benefits and or negative between alcohol and and, and marijuana, and they said, okay, well, hey, Al, was that most you? People, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's funny because they they kept saying that. Well, let's say that they're equal. No, no, yeah. no. no. Let's not no. say they're equal. I was literally getting so mad. You can't call it equal. They're not equal. One, one really hurts your yeah. liver. One doesn't hurt your liver. Yeah. But yeah. you can't say that one just because they're recreational. So I was getting, it's like, I'm a, I used to be a sprinter in high school, but I can't run as fast as Usain Bolt. They're different. You know, you can't compare things mm, that are right. uncomparable. So that's yeah. what really got me riled up. That, yeah. that they tried to compare it to alcohol as if they're even in, in positives and negatives. It's just ridiculous. It's, yeah, so. yeah. No, they're not, they're not equal in any ways. Uh, means or not matters. in any way. And, and one it, kills you and one creates homeostasis. So. Uh, <laughs> yeah. and, and to answer your question, Kim, yeah. um, I don't think so. Um, it sounds like you uh, until yeah, equal. Yeah, 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 just so you know, Scott, uh, I was um, <laughs> part of a segment on the weekends on Rock 107 out of Belleville during the flower hours. Oh, sorry. Yeah, back in 2008, 2009, uh, for basically two years, I was educating people on, on cannabis on the, on the radio, on terrestrial yeah. radio. And then I was interviewed by um, Sean, uh, Sean but um, I don't remember it being anything along that line. So it could have been somebody else that, you know, it could have been something, one of those things where they have the uh, a police or chief of police involved in the discussion on that. Who knows? Right. Yeah. 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 But it sounded so much like you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It could have been. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 For sure. So you've got, uh, you, you know, you've got some history with advocating for the plant and, and with uh, yeah. using the plant for medicinal purposes. Um, you've seen the evolution of this as we've been going along for the last few decades um, and, and been at the forefront of that using your medicine. Uh, legalization came along and on October the 17th, a few years back, and uh, that's something that you want celebrated and that's that's where we are at now with saint fatty's day your little your little right. uh invention here well it's you know again when when we first came up with the idea um the the day of um we thought it was a hilarious thing um and thought it was quite ironic and funny and whatnot and clever and then realized a couple of days later that it could be something really important and we could do something with it. Um, sure, it's a day that yeah. we can celebrate and, and whatnot, but if we can do something and, and do something good, um, and that's why we're doing what we're doing. Um, we're all into the recreational part, sure, yeah. but the medicinal part is even more important. And we, we want to really, because of the date itself, we want to create our. We're, we're creating a cannabis Christmas. Our own cannabis Christmas. Yeah, it's our own. It, ten seventeen is the new four twenty. Is what we're telling people, and it, people it, are, are catching it, on. Well, 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 that's true, right? Because well, four twenty, we we know when when it is, but it's not really a legal date or anything. It's just kind of a uh, it's a good time to have. Um, there four twenty is our brothers, but um, we think that the October seventeenth, St. Patty's Day, is, is is an international day for everybody. Um, and look at the positive. So, how, how did you come up with how did you come up with the marriage of um, using St. Fatty's Day, uh, also a day of celebration uh, to celebrate legalization here in Canada? But how did you um, come up with the idea, or what led you to the idea of marrying this with um, the opiate crisis going on in the Tyendinaga region? Well, a, a lot had to do with timing. 
um, things that were happening in the news. And we could see um, that there were issues not only with the opioid crisis, and why is there an opioid crisis, um, you know, in in the First Nations, (laughs) everywhere in society, but particularly hit by First Nations. Mm -hmm. Um, And also in the news was the residential schools. So all that was building in emotionally for a lot of people, including myself, trying to figure out a way. I'm, I, I, I'm not indigenous. I, my only connection is I lived near um, Tainanega, and I, I went to school and, and right. played sports with some guys that were indigenous. Um, mm-hmm. But I'm also, I was brought up Catholic. And so I have this incredible, not guilt for anything I did, Internal terrible guilt that, yeah. that, that, that this has happened, this whole situation. We don't have to get into it. We Absolutely. all know. Yeah. So what, can, yes. what can I do? So I have this platform, St. Fatty's Day. Okay. It's, and, and so how do I do something about it? So that's when I approached Legacy 420. I, I knew that they were so legitimate with their medicine. With, mm. you know, medicine is first with them. And then there's flour and you can buy all that stuff too and all the other um, yeah, and it's all te- it's all tested on site. They have that big lab in, in there, and the whole yeah, stuff, the whole works. It's not it's not no little wee cigarette shack where I've seen in some ads, and uh, no, yeah. it's uh, it's quite the facility. It's just, yeah, it, it's amazing yeah, and I mean, done. let's face it, the cannabis is is very useful tool uh, yeah. to have in your tool belt to help us all cope with what's going on oh, yes. um you know ra- turning turning to plant remedy rather than turning to a pharmaceutical or a street drug pharmaceutical that's out there or um, being home. you're saving Absolutely. lives if you can if you can deter that and if you can if you can a lot of people are using cannabis to get mm-hmm. through their day so it makes sense to marry this. Yes, absolutely. And, yeah, and absolutely. I knew that um, the background story of Tim Barnhart, who's the owner of Legacy 420, um, mm-hmm. I've seen a lot of his um, advocacy. Um, so that's why I knew, I knew I wanted to approach uh, his company um, to do this um, and try to figure out a way, how can we, and, uh, how can we help? Uh, we barnstormed in meetings after meetings, and came up with the idea. Um, I, I presented to them um, something called "Pass the Peace Pipe," and they jumped at it, loved the idea, and we developed it from um, the original idea to. Uh, I'm going to be producing the video, um, mm-hmm. and, and we're going to be getting high-end um, athletes, well-known people, as well as everyday people, mm-hmm. passing this peace pipe from one coast, one side of the coast to the other, All right, um, I'm jump, creating I'm awareness. Gonna... But more importantly creating money and, and gathering money for these holistic healing centers. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Hang on here. Hang on here. Yes. I want to go to break. Okay. I'm going to go to break and then I come back. I want to talk about this whole project. Okay. Because I know, I know that you're going to, we're going to get into it here and we're going to end up splitting it up. And I'd just rather be able to have it, you know, you can talk about it without the commercial break, uh, getting in the middle of things. How's that? Perfect. Absolutely. Um, Sounds great. All right. Okay. All right. Well, I'll head off to break. Um, and then uh, shortly after that, Kim and I will continue our talk with uh, Scott Granville of Past the Peace Pipe and St. Fatty's Day. This is the Pace Radio Show, and we are live here at paceradio.net. You're listening to the Pace Radio Network here at paceradio.net. At Legacy 420, we believe in being different. Experience the difference of quality control. Our labs provide tested formulations for all of our products. Experience the difference in trust. Our customers can trust that we are following up-to-date COVID precautions for their safety. Experience the difference in accessibility. We're open seven days a week. Please visit our website, Legacy420.com, or contact us for curbside pickup as well as nationwide mail order shipping. Legacy 420 values overall wellness. Come and experience the difference of Legacy 420. The People's Alliance of Cannabis in Canada is an organization working to improve cannabis legalization in Canada. They have a mission and values that includes all Canadians no matter where they come from. The values are including everyone as no one should be excluded from participating, equality, diversity, advocacy, along with cannabis education and research plus industry 
safety and professional standards. If this is an organization that has the same values as you, check them out at People's Alliance of Cannabis in Canada .ca. Once again, People's Alliance of Cannabis in Canada .ca. Check them out. Enjoy the buzz of legalization with Campbellford Lifestyle Shop. From lights to plant nutrients, books, consumption accessories, and more, we've got all your basics to grow or consume cannabis. Visit our info center or take a look at our piercing services and body jewelry, now available in-store through Campbellford Lifestyle Shop. 17 Bridge Street West, Campbellford. What do you find at paceradio.net? People advocating cannabis education. A doctor's job is to relieve your pains. And when it comes to growing cannabis, the biggest pain is trimming. Let Dr. Buck Cannabis Trimming Solutions take the pain away. Whether you're a home grower or a commercial operation, we have the cure. From four plants to 400 plants, garden size doesn't matter. Dr. Buck Cannabis Trimming Solutions comes to you with years of experience and professional discreet service. It's simple. We trim your weed and we do a damn good job. Visit drbuckcts.com to book your or trimming. CTCP operates medicinal cannabis signing clinic. If you want to grow your own medicinal cannabis and are located anywhere in Canada, then I'd like to suggest that you give them a call. They can be reached at 1-613-967-9888. That's 1-613-967-9888. And grow on with CTCP. Growing your own vegetables, flowers, or even medicinal plants can be a challenge without the right equipment and proper know-how. At BMA Hydroponics, not only are they your urban horticultural experts and suppliers, but their staff holds the customer's needs paramount to making a sale. Family-owned with decades of experience and knowledge, they offer free advice in person by phone or email. BMA Hydroponics wants to ensure you have the advice you need, which is why you'll find tips and tricks on different ways to grow, like WIC, Ebb and Flow, Drip, or Aeroponic System, as well as other helpful links at bmahydroponics.com. If you can't find what you're looking for, just let them know, and they'll do everything they can to get what you're looking for. At BMA Hydroponics, each staff member also possesses a federal exempt MMAR license, making their strong suit, empathy, experience, and dedication to their customers. Because when you know how to grow, you'll have results that make you proud. BMA Hydroponics in Belleville, Ontario. Visit bmahydroponics.com. We are people advocating cannabis education here at paceradio.net. Hey, we're back. It's the Pace Radio Show, and we are live here at paceradio.net. If you miss our live show, you can always catch the podcast afterwards at our website, paceradioshow.com. I'd also like to mention and remind people to tune in tomorrow to the Reef Reporters with host Cindy Howell and her new radio partner, Ron McNabb. Uh, this is his sophomore show. This is the second show for him. Uh, this starts tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern. You can watch that on Facebook as well as on YouTube. Or you can catch the podcast afterwards at paceradio.net. Today on the program, we're joined by our guest, Scott Granville of Pass the Peace Pipe and St. Fatty's Day, as well as my joint host, Northern Ontario, Kim Cooper. Well, Kim? We've been talking about a bunch of different things here with Scott. Uh, before the break, he, he was I had to interrupt him because he was going to start uh, discussing past the peeps pipe. Yes, and I mean, this sounds like a great little uh, initiative that you guys have got going on. Something that's going from coast to coast across the nation passing the peace pipe. Um, and I mean, perfect timing, not only with legalization, but also with colonization, you know, with Thanksgiving just being uh, being taken place, uh, you know, uh, it's it's appropriate. Right. The the um, as far as with with the uh, past peace pipe, uh, Scott, is this this is something you were talking about before the break? We were talking about uh, center. You were talking about uh, getting it to spread across the country as far as uh, different. Uh, centers or locations across the country, so on and so forth? Yeah, what we're doing is um, we're starting in Tyantanaga. Tim Barnhart from uh, Legacy 420 is, is going to donate some land. Uh, what, what we're doing is we're um, creating awareness starting on Sunday, on St. Fatty's Day, right at 10 a.m. We're going to have a press conference at Legacy 420 okay. and do the actual ceremonial passing of the peace pipe at 1017. Right right um, there at the, the, uh, at the store, out, out, at the store there? 
right there at the store um, on York Road in Tyendinaga. Forty six um, York Road. Yep. And yeah, the the idea is to start one build at a time, and we're going to be yes. using kind of like the um, a community build similar to mm-hmm. Habitat for Humanity idea. Mm-hmm. So we're getting um, partners from the Belleville Quinney area um, and in uh, Mohawk territory that have skills that building skills and whatnot. And we're just gathering those builders and whatnot. Um, we're getting um, help through the ministry. We're t- contacting Loyalist College and other community colleges um, for their support to try to um, good, good. help with the build. Um, so, yeah, it's, uh, it's a, a very large initiative starting one build at a time. And the idea is to start with the Six Nations. So we'll start with uh, Mohawk Territory, Oneida, Cayuga, um, and Tuscadero, and um, Onondaga. I think I got them all. Um, And, yeah, one build at a time. So the more support we get for the first build, the more knowledge we get on how to do it, how to um, initiate community involvement. Um, we have people, um, in the community now that are learning about this. We just sent out the press release. Um, so we're getting positive responses already. Um, yeah. we have a GoFund, um, uh, account up and running. Um, what's, what's, you, and got, uh, you got a name on that? You can throw that out there right now. It is past the peace pipe. Okay. There you go. Go find me page. Go there past go. the peace pipe. Super. Keep going. Yeah, and so, um, yeah, so the idea, again, get a community build, get people involved, um, and then spread it out to the Six Nations and then go coast to coast. Um, Visually, what we're doing is taking the peace pipe from one side of the coast to another. It's a symbolic peace pipe. It doesn't have to be a peace pipe, but it could be um, anything to symbolize um, your location. So, for example, um, somebody in Halifax will pass the peace pipe um, on a selfie. So we'll add that selfie to the video, and then we'll have a Halifax covered. So we're trying to get awareness so that people will actually connect from one coast to the other. Yeah, and at the same time... Well, you know, build... to get across the coast, you pretty much have to go right up Highway 11 and, like, right by yeah. my house. <laughs> there you go. The Trans-Canada. There you go. <laughs> I, can be- I can vouch for that. I just did it. <laughs> <laughs> just putting that out there if you need you know you need a, a, a stop over or anything you know, just that. there you go <laughs> the uh yeah, yeah it's, I, cause it is it's, for sure it is it is it, it's, it's a great initiative uh opiate addiction uh has taken so many people um you know it was something that uh, some people thought was a was a clear benefit and others have you know, obviously you've fallen victim to it and it's, it's not good. And there's, there's ways to do that. And more people know that there is maybe options. Like I know after surgery, it'd be tough for me not to sit, to say no to an opiate drug to kill pain versus uh, cannabis to, you know, deal with some type of surgery. But I know for myself, uh, for my conditions, Crohn's condition, I'm surgery free, but I've never had a prescription for an opiate drug while I've been out of the hospital. And that's because of cannabis. And, and I know when you, like people like yourselves who want to get out there and educate people about how cannabis can make a difference instead of using opiates, um, yeah, I fully stand behind you because uh, I'm, I'm one of those people who did, who, ha- who are. It, it's, it, it is incredible the, uh, the power of, the, of that drug and, and how many people it's, it's mm-hmm. heard in, in, in the First Nations specifically. Uh, and, and also, it's the treatment of it. I mean, uh, Tim Barnhart uh, was, was mentioning uh, to me in a conversation recently that it costs $30,000 a month to send your loved one away because there's no local um, treatment centers. So they have to oh. be sent away. And it costs such a ridiculous amount of dollars oh. to, to, you know, to do this. And, 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 I, and I think that, um, you know, I'm not an expert on treatment in any way. Um, I'm, I'm just, um, what I want to do is use my vehicle as St. Fatty's Day to, to, to keep 
the, the conversation going yeah. to, to, to keep people knowing that there's a fundraiser out there that we need help. We need help. Mm. Um, and that's what I can do. I'm not an expert in, in treatment, but, but I have seen the way, um, that Tim and the team and, and the experts are looking at it from the point of view of first nations, because yeah. I'm not first nations. And, 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 and they've been sending me information and it just seems they have the eight dimensions of wellness. That just seems, it, it seems a little bit more, um, manageable. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I don't know about cost effective, but certainly it, 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 it seems a little bit more diverse than, than what people are getting now, and which is move your, you know, your loved one away to a treatment yeah. center somewhere else. Yeah, exactly. And the expense is so much. So. Yeah. If you can keep it there in the community, uh, as well as, you know, it would keep a lot of stuff within the community. You could be able to bring, you, you obviously would have all kinds of counseling and so on and so forth that would be there in order to treat people. And, um, you know, it's a necessity. It, Absolutely. And we need yeah. experts and we need, we need help. So anybody listening, um, that would be of great help because okay. the, none of us are, are experts in, in all fields. So um, we're going to need no. support from, from the medical side, um, uh, treatment side and, and whatnot. So. Yeah. Um, it's exciting. It's exciting that we're trying to do something positive and, and we hope that, you know, everyone will jump on board because, um, we have powerful people within our industry that we know, and, and I'm a TV guy, so a yeah. sports TV guy specifically. So we're trying to get, um, famous sports people to help pass the peace pipe along the way, um, to get people involved and, and get the initiative going. Well, you mentioned something about a documentary, Yes, we'll be filming everything. <laughs> we've been fil- uh, up to this point. We've been filming, uh, so we'll have cameras at at the um, ceremony on Sunday. Um, we're having a a big St. Fatty's Day party afterwards, and everyone's invited um, from one to four in Belleville. Um, and we'll be filming that. We have drone cameras. We have we we got it all looked after, and we're filming, we're collecting film from from people doing selfies, sending 10 second videos. Hi, I'm, I'm Bob from Victoria and I, I support passing the peace pipe and we'll add that to the video. Oh, cool. Um, yeah. So we're trying to, yeah. you know, every, every time someone passes the pipe via their selfie, we'll mark that on the map well, and then we'll see how we can connect Canada. Uh, um, from well, Kim, Kim, um, you know, we've got friends who are helping, on the East Coast as well as on the West Coast, uh, yeah. with with uh, the opiate uh, and you know, opiate addiction and cannabis through substitution yes. programs. Yes, yes. Chris Backer out on the East Coast. Cindy Howell is also um, donating meds and driving around uh, her area in Nova Scotia. Uh, in nice. uh, um, and we've got. Uh, Neil Magnuson out in BC who started the cannabis substitution program and now it's expanded to the East Coast as well. There is also Sudbury has uh, up in my neck of the woods here has just started a cannabis substitution program um, and the one in the East Coast and the one in Sudbury are both modeled after Neil Magnuson's uh, um, events that he has and he's I mean he's worked out of uh, he had a shop and then the cop show so uh tore down his shop or, or took out his shop yeah. so he moved into a van they have uh they have a camper van and they they go to vancouver's lower east side and they give away cannabis um in edibles as well as um uh, uh inhalation mm-hmm. uh cannabis products for the uh the addicted on the lower east side to help them curb their use of opiates and other harder drugs. So yeah, we've got we've got people coast to coast um, that are doing this kind of thing. Yeah, it'd it's be amazing. yeah. What he's doing out there? Yeah, exactly. That's uh, you know. Yeah. And you know, in on the reserves themselves, you know, as you said earlier, it, it's a problem. And by getting it is. It is. Yeah. And, and largely, more... I know a large population of the Vancouver uh, people that Neil helps. There's a lot of indigenous That's there. Yeah. It's, yeah. And if you can a get a, if you can get uh, one that's uh, within their community uh, that where they can yeah. get help, you know, it, it's, 
know, it's sort of like insight. You know, it, if you can get people in the door and get them some help, then you know it's it's a win win. You know? That's how. Absolutely. 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 And I mean, there are so many reserves um, that are facing this crisis that don't have avenues uh, for help. You know, when you're when you're in the cities, when you're in Toronto, when you're in Vancouver, um, even in Belleville, there are are. There are avenues yeah. of help. There are treatment centers. They're, they're not cannabis related and a lot of them frown on cannabis use and that's, that's a whole other issue. But there are avenues and there are people to talk to. There are counselors, this and that. You get onto indigenous land and all of that stops dead. Like there's, there's nothing. So this is, this is needed for sure and, and, and very welcome. Yeah, we're really looking forward to uh, to the launch um, yes. and, and see where it goes because it's, you know, there's a lot of people that in, in a short amount of time have uh, backed the project. And, and it's just as soon as we start getting national press, um, yeah. that's when we believe. And getting well-known faces, um, we're, we're really pushing to get on Hometown Hockey on October 30th. Um, it's in oh. Belleville. Um, oh, is it? I've contacted... Yeah, I contacted nice. the executive producers um, of Hometown Hockey, which is ironic because it's actually a show that um, is based on the show that I did for Sportsnet about 15 years before. It was okay. called Slapstick. Um, so it's basically the same show um, as Hometown Hockey. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that, uh, with Ron McLean and, and Tara Sloan. Um, so that's why I'm, 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 I'm hoping that Tim Barnhart and myself will be on to try to promote what we're doing. Um, that would be a big, big bonus to have Ron McLean and Tara Sloan passing the peace pipe. Oh um, yeah, would eh? <laughs> it? Yeah, it, it would really launch the program in a big way. Um, yes, and and we believe that we have a pretty strong argument to be on there. So, um, yes, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. And very cool. I'm very cool. Much, and pretty much you've got really a website all... set up too. Yes. Well, the website we have is stfattiesday.com, um, but we don't have one specific for the peace pipe yet. Um, you, you've got so many enterprises around this. It's just amazing. I mean, you're you're a producer. You've put together this website and this um, this event that is going on this St. Fatty's Day, the past, the peace pipe. You wrote the song that's being played in the video. <laughs> you sing the song that's playing in the video. You wrote the music to the song that's being played in the video. Um, and the St. Fatty's Day website. Um, I love this. I, on your About <laughs> Us section, it says October 17th or St. Fatty's Day is the annual celebration of legalization of cannabis uh, by the visionary, visionary nation of Canada. Visionaries we are. Uh, the Great White <laughs> North has become the international beacon of hope and admiration by cannabis lovers all over the world, and we are 100% plant-based. I love that. <laughs> I love yeah, that. Well, we, that's, you know, that's, that's fantastic. We like to have, we like to have some fun, um, and... And that's what cannabis is about, right? <laughs> um, and I really came up with, it's funny, I came up with past the peace pipe idea of, I, when I was passing the peace pipe to myself. And I had a couple puffs and thought, hey, I got a good idea. Um, so, you know, we all know this when we go to a rock concert and, and maybe not post-COVID times, but the first thing you do is you pass your joint. Everyone oh. shares with cannabis. Oh, yeah. You know that? So yeah. You don't go to a bar and someone or, or an event and someone says, here, take a drink, a sip no. of my beer. No, that doesn't <laughs> happen. But everyone shares cannabis. It's something that people don't remember. It's, it's, it's the most sharing. It's a hug drug. Um, and it's, it's, it's communal it's really, activity. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's part yeah. of socializing. And some, people get hung, some people get hung for it, right? Yeah, yeah, apparently. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> what, 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 talking about getting hung. What'd you think of that story? Like, what the? Wow, it's just insane. It is. It is. 
hanging people for two pounds of cannabis. Yeah. In 2021. Yeah, yeah. You know, you we're know, celebrating legalization and St. Fatty's Day, and this guy's going to yeah. die on yeah. another part of the world. You know, yeah. I mean, it just what shows... the hell is happening? Don't we forget how lucky we are, really, you know, to to live um, in, in a country where we were able to make this happen? I mean, we never had the death penalty, thank goodness, but many people spent, you know, decades yes. in jail uh, with, you know, adverse conditions and, and beatings and rapes and everything else, you know, and many of them were innocent as well. So, I mean, we are we are lucky, but st- still, we've got a long way to go here um, with, no with acceptance. It's coming, but we've still got a long way to go. But when we look at an, another part of the world, it's got to be like, okay, yeah, we're, we're doing okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's... It's stuff like what you're doing, Scott, when it comes to these uh, to the center um, that can bring that that information and that knowledge and and that forward as far as getting help getting the word out uh, on benefits because you know even though there's all been reports for years and years and years, we still just got to keep putting it on there. Uh, I know when you look at the opiate struggle down in the U.S. and uh, when cannabis became legal in the states, you know, you know, opiate deaths dropped. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, and yeah, I mean, it, statistics are pretty obvious. They're there. It's you have to get them out to people to to get them to understand. I think. Yeah. Um, yeah keep repeating exactly. it over and over, and they'll listen. Yeah. Listen. Yeah. Just, yeah. Okay. You know. So, it, so your whole vision started with the Saint Fatty's Day. It evolved into past the peace pipe um you've got other sponsorship involved to move this along and i mean it sounds fantastic who wouldn't want to be in on this um you know past the peace pipe across the nation i'm sure that's going to be a huge hit for sure i'm still on your website um and uh you've got an official petition to declare yes. October 17th, an yes. actual governmental holiday. Holiday, yes. Um, we, we're we hoping people will get on online and sign it. Um, whether or not it will happen, I'm not sure, but I just think that, you know, it's uh, instead of having a Thanksgiving, um, why not have a Harvest Day on St. Fatty's Day? Um, and bring everybody in. I think that would be a little bit more appropriate than Thanksgiving um, in this day and age. Um, so that's why that's there. Um, and I also like to throw out the fact that we, I, I designed um, uh, a clothing line uh, to go along with St. Fatty's. And, and uh, the one thing that we've designed are running shoes. And we sell the sneakers and uh, $10.17 um, for the month of October, for the sale of every shoe, will go to the Pass the Peace Pipe campaign. Um, for the other 11 months, it goes to Alzheimer's. $10.17 for every shoe that we sell, every sne- pair of sneakers that we sell, goes to the Alzheimer's Society of Canada. And that's because, nice. you probably will know this, the Bird Institute in South Florida um, has, has realized that cannabis helps break down brain plaques for Alzheimer's. Mm-hmm. And that was a study that came out at least two years ago. Um, so my mom and dad both passed away recently, and they both had brain issues um, with these brain plaques. And they never had a chance to try cannabis. My dad almost did. Um, when he found out it was helping Alzheimer's, he ran to that same doctor, Dr. Bates I was telling you about earlier. Uh-huh. And uh, he was all excited at 83 to try it. He never got a chance. And so I want people to get a chance. Um, yeah. and so that's yes. why money will go, um, to, to, to that. Now, when it comes to the, 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 as you said, you're going to donate $10 to 17 cents for the shoes. I see here on your website, yeah. you've got like one, two, three, four, five, six on just on the first page alone, six different kinds of shoes. So it's not any particular shoe. It's. All the sho- any of the shoes, including yep. the beach shoes. Uh, not the beach shoes. No, 
just okay. the regular sneakers. Just yeah, the runners. The just runners. the runners. The runners. Yeah. And you got some nice runners. You got some vans in there. <laughs> yes, they're cool, eh? Some what in there? <laughs> yeah. Vans. Vans. Yeah. All, all my, Sunny vans. All, my, all, all the names. All the names are based on 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 um, pot puns. Um, indicators, Sadavans, yeah. you know. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> trying to be, trying to be yeah, cute. That's, um, yeah. Trying to be cute. That's very, very cute. It is. It's very, yeah. very cute. Um, well, I think and, we, and we some branded nice it pretty changes. well. Yeah. Yeah. So. Blue, red, so the, white. The little, the little guy. Is the guy, is that you? or? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's me, Fatty. I'm in much better shape. <laughs> um, <laughs> for our radio uh, listeners no, out there it's uh it's a very absolutely. buff man with a very very red that, beard and uh and a nice little hat and uh you know the puff coming out of the side of the mouth and the arms are crossed with the big bulging muscles over top of the large chest so that'll give you a little bit of an overview of what the little guy looks like and he's printed on the side of the shoe it says saint fatty's day october the 17th along the side of the shoe the guy's standing in front of uh, a canadian flag so that's very cool canadian flag where am i seeing a canadian flag oh there okay i see on that shoe yeah i see that okay there's another shoe there i'm looking okay i was looking at the other one there with I'm looking at the flag. With the yeah. pot leaf behind uh, it. I'm going, flaggers. Canadian flag, it's got a cannabis leaf behind it. <laughs> the nice scroll. Oh, the other one is the pot leaf. Yeah, no, the, the Bogarts is a Canadian flag. It's kind of Yeah, cool. yeah, like that yeah that's right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good. It's good that you're doing that, that you're putting money towards you know, uh, the Alzheimer's Society and, um, and towards the um, center from this. Yeah, yeah, and reasonably cool. priced too, as far as runners go. Like ninety bucks for a pair of runners, man. That's yeah, that's average. Well, we're we're actually we're, we're going to have um, uh, at our party on on Sunday um, in the Foster Ward Community Center in Belleville. That's where we're going to be setting up. So anybody that wants to come and get Christmas presents, they can come down and and, and have some drinks and and food and celebrate with us, um, and then. Stock your stuffing or stuff your stocking with, with all kinds of cannabis stuff. Um, not not cannabis um, product, but 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 clothing line and stuff like that. Clothing stuff yeah, like yes. that. Yeah, yeah. Clothing and, and, and yeah. yeah, yeah. I yeah. see you got Very hats cool. there. Very cool. We have, yeah, baseball hats. We got uh, t-shirts. Um, yeah, lots lots of different things. So. Oh, yeah, trying to brand it as best we can. The t-shirts are double-sided, so you've got stuff on yes. the front and as the well. Sleeve. And, and the, the sleeve. Oh, the is guy a... is on the sleeve as well. Oh, is he? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. Cool. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Right. Good. You got yeah. to made up all that stuff. Yeah. Got everything <laughs> ready. Now, the, uh, the other petitions are all there. I'm at the website, too, floating around. Yeah, it's a, it's a fairly cool website. I really like your little guy. I got to tell you, I need something with him on it. So I'm, uh-huh. I'm going to wind up yeah, making really. a purchase here. I got to <laughs> have this guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the nice thing about being able to purchase things online, Kim, because you're not you're not very close to anything you're going to get to, such as a mall. Yeah, and then I don't think I'm making it down to see Scott anytime soon either. So yeah, I'm really thankful for these websites and these little uh, these little boxes that says "Add to Bag." Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Excellent, dude. Um, well, I see we're we're pretty much at the yeah. top of the hour. I was going to to get into the next conversation, but perhaps I should put that on hold. We'll put that on hold, and we'll hear the song in the next segment too. All right. Nice. All right. Okay, we are off to break. Uh, after that commercial, Kim and I will continue continue this conversation with Scott Scott Granville. When we get back, you're listening to Pace Radio Show. We are live here at paceradio.net.
You're listening to the Pace Radio Network here at paceradio.net. BMA Hydroponics has everything you need to succeed. Visit our hydroponic superstore at 404 Maitland Drive in Belleville and we'll show you how to grow your own quality cannabis for pennies per gram. We're open Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. and Thursdays and Fridays from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Call 613-967-9888. BMA Hydroponics, it's worth the drive. The only way to go. CTCP operates Medicinal Cannabis Signing Clinic. If you want to grow your own medicinal cannabis and are located anywhere in Canada, then I'd like to suggest that you give them a call. They can be reached at 1-613-967-9888. That's 1-613-967-9888. And grow on with CTCP. Are you interested in Canadian and international cannabis news? If you are, then catch myself, Kim Cooper and Al Graham for our live reefer report on the Pace Radio Network, found at paceradio.net. A doctor's job is to relieve your pain. And when it comes to growing cannabis, the biggest pain is trimming. Let Dr. Buck Cannabis Trimming Solutions take the pain away. Whether you're a home grower or a commercial operation, we have the cure. From four plants to 400 plants, garden size doesn't matter. Dr. Buck Cannabis Trimming Solutions comes to you with years of experience and professional discreet service. It's simple. We trim your weed and we do a damn good job. Visit drbuckcts.com to book your or trimming. Enjoy the buzz of legalization with Campbellford Lifestyle Shop. From lights to plant nutrients, books, consumption accessories, and more, we've got all your basics to grow or consume cannabis. Visit our info center or take a look at our piercing services and body jewelry, now available in-store through Campbellford Lifestyle Shop. 17 Bridge Street West, Campbellford. The People's Alliance of Cannabis in Canada is an organization working to improve cannabis legalization in Canada. They have a mission and values that includes all Canadians no matter where they come from. The values are including everyone as no one should be excluded from participating, equality, diversity, advocacy, along with cannabis education and research plus industry safety and professional standards. If this is an organization that has the same values as you, check them out at People's Alliance of Cannabis in Canada dot ca. Once again, People's Alliance of Cannabis in Canada dot ca. Check them out. At Legacy 420, we believe in being different. Experience the difference of quality control. Our labs provide tested formulations for all of our products. Experience the difference in trust. Our customers can trust that we are following up-to-date COVID precautions for their safety. Experience the difference in accessibility. We're open seven days a week. Please visit our website, Legacy420.com, or contact us for curbside pickup as well as nationwide mail order shipping. Legacy 420 values overall wellness. Come and experience the difference of Legacy 420. You're listening to the Pace Radio Network here at paceradio.net. Hey, welcome back to the Pace Radio th- Show and thanks for tuning in. Tonight on the program, we're joined by our guest, Scott Granville of Past the Peace Pipe and St. Fatty's Day, as well as my joint host, Northern Ontario, Kim Cooper. Uh, okay, during the last segment, um, Kim and Scott, we were discussing the uh, Past the Peace Pipe project. And uh, what all was uh, about that, uh, Kim, I think you've got another thing you wanted to bring up about it. I did. Um, you know, this this uh, past the peace pipe going across coast to coast, That's I know it interests me and I know other people across the, the nation are going to be interested in participating in something like this. Now, we talked about, uh, you know, doing it on a video. Um, so if somebody wanted to join you and say, hey, you know, put me on your map, how do they go about getting involved? It's quite easy, actually. We're going to be sending out um, on Sunday when we we do the uh, the actual um, ceremony um, on St. Fatty's. We're going to be sending out a video to people. So um, if they follow us on Instagram at St. Fatty's Day, um, we will be sending out um, an actual how-to video. Um, it's quite easy. Just everyone knows how to do a selfie, um, and it will be. Um, Depending on where you're located, we're asking for people from different locations in Canada. Um, if they're behind the project, they just literally look into the camera, smile, and say, "I'm." Say your name. 
uh, from Victoria, BC, and we're here to support passing of the peace pipe. And then we'll add that Victoria to our map, and where the idea is to get different people from different parts of the country, and then the map will be filled by the end of, hopefully by the end of the year. And next October 17th, when we come back to see how far we've gone on the project, we'll be able to have hundreds of people passing the peace pipe symbolically That's through these videos. Very, that very is cool. so very, very cool. We, we've done um, a smaller version of this, but just like on, on uh, StreamYard or Zoom or whatever, where we've had, you know, somebody from the West Coast, somebody from the East Coast, and a few of us in the middle, and we just sort of pass it like through the screen so it looks like our arm is going next yeah. door, and then the person that's beside you on the screen reaches his <laughs> hand out, grabs it, pulls out a joint. They've got their own joint, of course, and oh, now they're yes, smoking yes, it, yes, and then we yes. pass it. And we did that on 420 as well, and it was really fun. Um, so I, I can awesome. see people wanting to be involved in this because it is it's a lot of fun it brings people closer together you feel more like a community you feel like you're connected again um For because sure. the disconnect the last few years is definitely real uh, it, br it brings more awareness to what you're trying to do yeah and the, and the situation sure. yeah. the problem yeah there's no doubt about that so yes absolutely absolutely i think that's fantastic and uh, I hope that you get an outpouring of support uh, for this initiative because a uh, very important message behind it and something that people are going to want to be involved with. For sure. Yeah, exactly, exactly. All right, now uh, we mentioned a song um, before the last yeah. break. This is, uh, you, talked, you discussed this briefly at the beginning of the broadcast, but uh, you have... Uh, you seem to write music. Yeah, these are this guy's well, a jack of all yeah. trades. Yeah, I know, <laughs> eh? He does TV, does music, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know, uh, it, you take songs, that, so yeah. and then you take all that knowledge, and you're you're helping your community, which is a bonus. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's great. So, how did you develop this song? Well, it's actually uh, I, I first came up with the song title Mary Juana. Uh, based on, I was on a boat uh, in the Bay of Quinty, and the radio was on, and the radio DJ was saying um, something to the effect that we're very close to having legalized marijuana, and he pronounced it marijuana like that. And I said, I do, was my reaction to my buddies. And they said, what? He said, he just proposed to me, marijuana. And I, and I said, I do, 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 be, do, do. And because I probably was smoking a joint. So, <laughs> and that's how, I, and they looked at me like I was crazy and I wrote it down. I said, don't write that down. I went, no, I'm going to write it down. And it was part of the song. And so that's part of the ditty of the song. I do, 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 be, do, do. Um, and just went from there. And I, I, I told them at the time that I wanted to make this as a, the next pot anthem for, you know, the best, the next anthem for cannabis. And we'll, we'll send the, the song to Willie Nelson or, or, or Tom Petty, or somebody that's really, or Neil Young. <laughs> um, but instead, because yeah, I have yeah. people in the music industry, I was able to produce it. So Aaron Solomon, a very well-known producer and director of music in uh, Toronto, did that nice. and, and basically um, composed it for me. And, uh, you know, the song yeah. is what it is. And you do the vocals. You sing the song. I, yeah, well... Yes, I yeah I, I did the vocals. Um, <laughs> um, it's questionable whether I did a good job, but um, but the, if people listen to the words, every single word may, means something in that song. There's not there's no throwaway lines at all. Um, it's all about pot. There's there's very little that you can you know. <laughs> um, any pot lover will will enjoy the lyrics. Let's just put it that way. And Super. then you came up with the melody. Yeah, um, I've, I, I'm kind of in a um, creative industry um, in television, and and again, um, I, I do a lot of selling to corporations too, jingles and whatnot. So I'm able to, for whatever reason, I have the ability to come up with funny jingles and whatnot. And yeah, so I've done that. I've I've recorded maybe four or five songs over the last uh, few years, and it's the first time I marijuana was the actually first one I've ever done, but. Um, yeah, went from there. <laughs> this is the first. And people the, seem to like the song. Very cool. 
Very cool. Well, you know, you you uh, you say the, the the voice maybe not be so great. Well, let's let our listeners be the judge of that. We we have a copy. <laughs> That's right. We sure do, and we're gonna play it a little more than three three Excellent. about three and a half minutes but, long. So we'll, we'll play that uh, now, and then uh, when we come back, we'll talk more about the song. How's that? Sounds great. Cool. All right, here it goes. Oh yeah, baby, that lovely. Just as it says right there at the end of the song. Way to go, Scott. <laughs> nice. Very nice. I like it. Oh, my God. That was so cool. I love the beat. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with your voice. That was yes. great. Um, that was great. I zigzags in there. <laughs> <laughs> Lots yeah, of energy. Dr. Gr- yeah, Dr. Grinspoon. I don't know if you heard. Yeah. When we grin when yeah. we spoon. I had to put his name in yeah. there. Ah, uh, yes. I did. Yeah. And, and we heard your... your it's great. Your, your do, 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 do there. We heard that several times. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was really catchy. And it's got a great beat. It's really oh, yeah. catchy. I'm going to be I'm gonna be playing that. That was cool. Now, where... That's awesome, uh, yeah. Now we're like okay. Now you've you've recorded this song and everything. 
Now, is it available anywhere yet? Or like, has it been like yes, released? It's, yeah, it's it's actually being released. Ironically, on ten seventeen at ten seventeen in the morning. So it's going to be released on Spotify and iTunes. Yeah, on St. Fatty's Day this Sunday at ten seventeen in the morning. So ah. you're it's available then. Cool, cool, excellent. The uh, now is there yeah. Is there anything from the proceeds from like I don't, I'm not sure how how um, uh, I guess with Spotify I guess it's the playlists and stuff like that. It's not where you're purchasing songs, right? So it wouldn't be like a fundraiser for you. No, I don't. I, I, I in, unless it starts making money. Yeah. <laughs> if, if all of a sudden it becomes an anthem that we wish it to, then the peace pipe's going to get a little richer. <laughs> yeah, because I'm not looking yeah. to get yeah, rich off this single. Sure. Um, I use is, Spotify. You know. I use Spotify exclusively for my music, and uh, yeah, I've got several playlists on Spotify. Yeah. That one is going in every one of my playlists. I'll be looking for it. Fantastic. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, I, I yeah, again I have to compliment the uh, the producer um, Aaron Solomon, who did all, he played all the instruments, and my huh. only instruction was. Uh, I gave him the melody and I sang it to him. And of course I did the, the lyrics and, and the voice afterwards. But all I asked him was, he's one of the best violinists in Canada. And I said, just, you have to put violin. I love violin. So that's where you hear the violin throughout. I was, uh -huh. That's the only thing I asked him to do. He did all the, you know, he played, I think, seven instruments on it. Seven? So, nice. Yeah. <laughs> now, Very talented. Now, did you, did you change your voice? Did I, did I hear... A, a soft voice in there because there was everyone's no, that's, a, that's a female yeah that's my that was my um my niece laura mcdonald that that um was the backup vocalist <laughs> <She did laughs> there you great go. Job. nice nice yeah exactly yeah. very Kept important family. yeah good yes good it's a family affair that's no it's a great it's a great song it's catchy uh it's upbeat uh i i believe it's gonna it's going to make some playlists on Spotify, that's for sure. Oh, that's great. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's going on mine. So, for sure, for <laughs> sure, that one's going on all of my playlists. Um, what a great tune. It really gets you going. It gets you up. You're like, yeah. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I got to get up. I, I mean, I was sitting back and sort of leaning back in my in my office chair here while we're talking and it, all nice and comfy with my feet up that was that when i finally got it playing i was like i my feet are down i'm sitting up on the edge of my desk and i'm like oh yeah i'm kind of bouncing a little bit here it's like oh this is cool this is cool you know the longer i listened the more i liked it <laughs> yeah that's right that's right no, that's yeah. yeah, and it's kind of one. Of, it's, yeah. I've been told it's kind of one of those things where if you listen to it a second time, you might pick up another lyric that you missed the first time. Yeah. Over yes, because there's a lot of cannabis specific lyrics thrown in there. So um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, the it's fun to see all people's over reaction. The place. Yeah, there was one yeah. line there. There was one line there. Unfortunately, I can't recall what it was. But there was one that stood out, and I and it made me laugh. I thought, "What?" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Zig when I should have zagged. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, that's... I I just call it I just call it a beautiful love song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Do exactly. you mean you? For sure. Yeah. Yeah, For well. sure, I, I can see me walking around the house, you know, doing my housework, going do 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 do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you know, we uh, we used to play uh, partial songs here on the show uh, until uh, made some changes to the format, and I don't do that anymore. But this would have been a song I most definitely would have like loved to have put into all that. So they used to use it as bumpers going in and out of commercials, right? Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, yeah, yeah. This is something I would have used for sure. Yeah, there's no doubt yeah, about we'll that. Talk. We'll talk. Yeah, we'll talk. We'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get you some of that. I mean, you're, you, really are, you really are a jack yeah, of all trades getting all of this done in such a short period of time with the vision that you've had. Um, I mean, past the peace pipe. And then that evolving uh, to, you know, going coast to coast and, and then bringing in, 
you know, the opiate crisis, um, getting buildings together to help people, gathering sponsorship uh, for and, and donations for your vision to, to materialize. Um, I'm anxious already. What's next? Wow. Um, uh, we're not really sure. We're taking, we're going to see how this year's celebrations, because it seems mm -hmm. to be St. Fatty's Day gaining momentum every year, obviously, as people begin to talk about more and more. Um, what we're really looking forward to is what's, what's going to be, what's going to happen next year on October 17th. Yeah. How far have we mm -hmm. come? Like we can talk a big game and do this, but let's see how much money has been raised and how many shovels have been, you know, um, put in the ground because that's the important thing. Yeah. We have to yeah. get going on it right away. It, this yeah. is this isn't something that we talk about and then hopefully do something in a year or two. It has to be done right away. So this is why it's a call to yes. action um, for everybody just to you know um, you know let's get together and do this. It's something that's needed more than anything. Um, yeah, well, certainly the number one need. Yeah, when a community comes together, you know, like you said, Tim's donated land. You got people who are donating. Yeah. Uh, time and stuff like that when a community comes together and you see those on TV as well where communities come together and they can build something and, and it can become magical and, and it can benefit everybody and it can be done quickly for sure yeah yes it can yeah that's the whole idea yeah. for sure yeah. speed is important yeah, yeah. it's it's it, we're, at, we're in a crisis mode right now so we have to look at it that way exactly Absolutely. I mean people are dying People are dying. People are, are mm. losing family members to addiction. Um, it, it is a severe crisis, not only across this nation, but many others. Uh, and, you know, the pharmaceutical industry is got that train going on mm. full steam ahead. And we need some yeah. buildings on those tracks to slow this thing down. Yeah, good analogy. Yeah, for sure. Oh yeah, yeah. Because you know, it, it was been for so long. There's been st stigmatization against uh, people. You know, people say, "Oh, they should just just let them die. Just let them die." I've I've had people on. You know, I've posted a story on Facebook wow. about uh, about you know some help, and and people say, "Oh, just let them die. Just let them. You know, why why are you trying to help them? Well, because they're people too. You know, we're here yeah. to help each other. Yeah. That's right. That's and, somebody's child. That's somebody's child. child. That's somebody's Maybe someone's brother. dad. Yeah. Yeah, that's somebody's father. That's somebody's uncle. Um, you know, that's a person. That is a human being. Uh, you don't know what got them there. And it's irrelevant anyway. Uh, our judgment is our yeah. biggest obstacle when it comes to this. You know, we have to stop being so damn judgmental. And let's look at the issue that's created this crisis. And, and, you know, boots on the ground. That's, it's got to be now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's got to be now. It's not, it's not, um, you know, the, per, the people that are, that are in these situations now are, you know, people that end that can end up there just out of, because, you know, they got injured at work, you know, from, yeah. from some injury. Right. No. And next thing you know, they're on these painkillers and one thing leads to the next. And uh, it can't stop we've that train. We've heard the story a thousand times. Yeah. A thousand yeah. times we've heard that story. From, and, and literally a thousand times. Al and I have been doing this together for seven years. And we've talked to, you know, hundreds upon hundreds of patients. And the same story is recounted over and over and over again. I was on that train personally. I lived it. I know for a fact this is how it happens. You know, I mean, they, you start off with this prescription, that's not working, and they bump you up, and they bump you up, and they bump you up. And, I mean, everybody's walking around saying, well, it's it must be okay because it's the doctor. And then if you have the foresight enough to go in and say, hey, I think this is a problem. I think I might be addicted to this shit. Then they look at you and say, oh, addiction? Oh, well, we can't have that. You're cut off. Yeah. Well, yeah. now yeah. that person is looking for a substitute out of a street drug uh, and a street manufactured fentanyl or something, and they wind up in the fucking morgue. You know, yeah. I yeah. mean, this is this is the train that's going full steam ahead, and we need to we need some intervention, and it's going to take 
us to do it. We can't rely on anybody else. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's, yeah, it's like the yeah. it, it's like the cannabis end of things, Kim. Uh, it was patience fighting for patience. Yeah. You know? yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I mean, just uh, you know, you you go in with with a toothache and they're they're prescribing you like you know oxycodone and it's like what no no i don't need that um why is that the go to yeah yeah exactly and, why not no, give I people mean, that they're they're prescribing these these heavy opiates for minor pain you know 20 years ago you would have been told to you know go home and take a freaking aspirin and oh. now you get a narcotic. It's sad. You know, you know it, it's, uh, it's, it's, really, it's really bad. And, uh, you know, that's what's fueling all of this. Not to mention, you know, our, our living uh, statuses around, around different nations and their areas and stuff. You know, it, the whole thing is, is really, um, it's just a mess. And I'm glad for people like you. Uh, that are stepping up to do something yeah. about it with Path Peace Pipe. Yes, yeah. and, and 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 hats off to to Legacy Four Twenty for partnering. Um, you knew that they were going to be big into um, help. That's what they're they're all about. Um, That's right. Yeah. And uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, working with them. They are mm -hmm. great people. Yeah, yeah. And uh, when Tim sees something that he likes, uh, he gets involved. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right, well, we've only got a couple minutes left here. Uh, shout out time, Kim, unless you got some questions. Oh, no, shout out time sounds good to me. Um, I mean, there's lots going on with this guy. We're going to have to keep an eye on things and, you yes. know, wait for the, the release of that song. And, uh, you know, contact him. Get on Instagram, man, and, and join the peace trip, the, the, the peace pipe passing across uh across canada oh, that's much right. appreciated yes i would yes I, I hope to watch this grow you know it starts it starts one spot and as things go on it gets bigger and bigger and spreads things as kim knows uh when tim first got started getting involved uh, with us here at the pace radio network back in 2015 there wasn't a lot of dispensaries on reserves anywhere, and look at the look what it is like now. Yeah, so, yeah. Big change in a couple of years, and all it does is start with one, and look at the difference. So, yep, start slow but steady. That's right, slow exactly, slow. exactly. All right, so uh, shout out person, place, a thing, website. Whether you've mentioned it once before, that's fine. Feel free to do so again. Okay, um, you can find me at uh, stfattiesday.com. Um, on Instagram, it's at stfattiesday, and as well as Twitter, at stfattiesday. All righty. And there's no hyphen or period or anything like that in between saint and saint is spelled with it, just S-T? No. Just, okay. Just, just no S-T and then no. fatties day. All yeah. righty. Correct. Sounds good. Just making sure get that clear there. Double know. Yes. Yeah. All right, uh, Kim? Uh, shout out. I don't have one ready. I don't have one ready. Um, I'm going to give my shout out to um, our new joint host on the Reefer right. Reporters, Ron McNabb. Welcome to the network, Ron. Glad to have you aboard. <laughs> yes, uh, tomorrow morning uh, is Ron's second show, uh, second appearance on the Reefer Reporters. Uh, he's already, Kim just said, he's already sent his stories out. He's all ready to yep. go. Yeah. All ready to go. All ready to go. Exactly. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, you can find the Pace Radio Show on Facebook. We're on Twitter at Pace Radio, as well as we're on Instagram as Pace Radio Show. Uh, you can find us on the web at paceradio.net as well as pace-online.ca. Thank you. Just go to our sponsors, the friendly, helpful folks at BMA Hydroponics, as well as uh, drbuckcts.com, legacy420.com as well as Camelford Lifestyle Shop in downtown Camelford. Also, a huge thank you go to, goes to our guest, Scott Granville of Past the Peace Pipe and St. Fatty's Day. Uh, thank you very much, Scott, for coming on the show and uh, sharing your story as, and as well as this important project that you're working on. 
Thanks a lot. I really appreciate you, you and uh, Kim having me on. It was fantastic. Super. Thank you very much. Oh, our and, pleasure. That's right. And Kim, you know, thank you. I know. Yeah. You're welcome. And, and thank you for having me. And, oh, you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. Hey, yo, we're best buds. We've been together for seven, eight years now. So, all right. Uh, yeah, it's too long. <laughs> it's too long to count. <laughs> I know we're losing count. <laughs> exactly. All right. I'm other, count. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> other than that, thank you to our listeners and good night. Good night. The opinions of the individuals during this broadcast are their own and may not be the opinions of their group or other organizations they may be involved with. You're listening to the Pace Radio Network here at paceradio.net. Do you want to hear what patients and cannabis advocates have to say? If so, then catch the Pace Radio Show Wednesday nights here on paceradio.net. We are people advocating cannabis education here at paceradio.net.